In global news, world leaders are leaving the COP26 climate conference feeling optimistic about what's been achieved. Two major deals, one to cut methane emissions and the other on deforestation. Before he left, US President Joe Biden spoke about the sense of urgency in tackling the climate crisis. So I think there's a whole different attitude that's out there. And I think this is being led, and I'm not being solicitous here, I think this is being led by, uh, you know, uh, my granddaughters and their friends, that generation. I think they're out there going, whoa. And they're having a profound impact, having a profound impact on their parents and their grandparents about what's happening. And then all these climactic and climactic things have happened. That, they, that people are now paying attention like they never did before. Joining me now from Glasgow is science and environment correspondent Audrey Tan. Hey Audrey, Audrey, deals agreed, commitments made by countries. Do these signify real progress in dealing with the climate crisis? Hi, uh, yeah, yeah, so yesterday there were two uh, important pledges that were signed by more than 100 world leaders. The first one is a pledge to end deforestation and even reverse it by 2030. And the other one is another pledge to cut methane emissions by 30% um, in 2030 from 2020 levels. So these are both important steps um, for a couple of reasons. So in terms of methane, for instance, we all know about carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas, but methane is actually a more potent gas, meaning that it can trap much more heat on the planet over shorter time scales than carbon dioxide. So if there's a pledge to actually cut the amount of this gas in the atmosphere, then that could actually help the world reduce the warming uh, under the Paris Agreement. And secondly, deforestation. So we all know that the main cause of global warming today is the burning of fossil fuels, but deforestation and land use changes are also a huge contributor to the release of greenhouse gas emissions. So actually pledging to stop deforestation could actually turn off the tap of emissions and actually, by reforesting the forest, we ensure that our forests can do what they do best, which is photosynthesize and take in uh, planet warming carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. However, now these are two steps in the right direction. I think we still need to see how the rest of the talks pan out during this two-week conference, because there's still a lot of other issues to be worked out in terms of reducing carbon dioxide, the main greenhouse gas, and other issues in terms of climate finance to help uh, developing countries cope with the climate impacts. Right. Uh, Audrey, separately, over the years, you've attended many conferences. Uh, how does COP26 held under the, COVID, the cloud of COVID-19 compare? Because I can see in your background that life seems to have returned to normal. Yes. So, um, in Scotland now, you have to wear masks um, when you're in an indoor place. And yes, as you said, you know, in terms of conference, like just before I left for, Glas I left for Glasgow, I covered the Singapore International Energy Week, which was also a conference held during COVID. But I Thing you can see that it's pretty much different in terms of scale. So for here in Glasgow, you see the turnstiles behind me, that's like the first level of security. We have to do daily antigen rapid tests and report that on the British government's website. And before we can gain entry, we actually have to show them an email that says that states clearly the dates of the test, uh, our names, and they actually compare that uh, against our press passes. So that's the first step that we have to take. On top of that, um, within the compound, we all had to sign like a code of conduct that said that we will all wear a mask or face covering whenever we are inside the conference venue. There's also a lot of uh, hand sanitizers everywhere and uh, we are all urged to keep a safe distance. Uh, within the pavilion, pavilions yesterday, for instance, I saw the German pavilion, they, they had unmasked speakers in a room and closed uh, away from the audience who were masked. So that is just a, another kind of COVID measure. However, there is some kind of uh, irony in that because despite all these safe distancing measures, making us do antigen rapid tests and making us wear masks, um, there's in the secondary uh, security clearance, people are actually packed together like sardines. Uh, people are, I mean, the security guards are asking us to close the gaps, fill the gaps, which flies in the face of all other safe distancing measures. The long queues are huge to bug there among the delegates at this conference. Uh, hopefully things improve because it is going to be pretty challenging to wait in line for over an hour every day just to get into the conference venue. Right. Well, Audrey, uh, do stay safe there. And thank you so much for the updates. And that was our science and environment correspondent, Audrey Tan. You can follow our coverage of uh, COP26 on straightstimes.com.